Parsha 101, Parsha's Bamidbar, or Bamidbar. This is a new Parsha, a new book. This is the fourth book of the Torah, Book of Numbers, as they call it. Even though Bamidbar means the desert, but whatever. This is actually the first Torah portion mainly covers the, the census that was taken of the Jewish people and also where everybody camped. So a very uh, technical portion, it returns a lot of things are returned to over, uh, repeated in different ways. And uh, getting into the name of this week's Torah portion comes from the first verse. It says, by Yadav HaShem HaMoshe B'Bid Marsina. Hashem spoke to Moshe in the in the Sinai Desert and he said, hey, you count everybody up and make this happen. There's a lot of different, just com- the general idea of the commentary about why there's a count going on in the census. It reveals God's love for the Jewish people. I wonder how many of you are, what's going on, etc. There's a whole idea that as this is the fourth book of the Torah, the first book of the Torah, Boratius went through the creation of the world and also how the world kind of, you know, you have the flood and what well, idolatry is on the rise. And also there's a family that's being singled out from all the families of the world. This is going to be the makings of the people, right? Because that's, we're following the Jacobson, well, Avram, it's like Yaakov, we're going to follow the Jacobson clan. How did they become a people? Well, that's the book of Exodus. Exodus tells us about it, how they became a nation. This is this is the birth, not just of a world and the general population, but the birth of a very specific people, the birth of a nation. Then, the book of Leviticus, Vayikra, which is all the stuff we went to, we went through lot, in the last couple of weeks, a lot of technical details, that tells us that this is the, they're being charged with a divine mission. How do they make their divine mission occur? That they're going to go and they're going to illuminate the world and they change over the world and turn to a holy place? Well, that's the book of Vayikra. That's what the book of Vayikra tells us. And now we're at Bamidbar. Bamidbar, which is in the desert, so metaphorically, it's like, okay, we got to release them into the desert of the world to to make this all happen. Okay, so we have the census that's going to be taking place. The day that this was told to do the census, it's a year and a month after, well, sort of a month after the redemption. So it's the first day of the second month, so the month of ER, the first day of the month of ER, which comes after Nisad, following the redemption. So... To the year, the redemption occurred in 2448, and this is 2449. Now, there's there's a double thing that Moshe was told to count the Jewish people family by family. Go to each family, say how many, you know, how many are here, how many are how many here. Then you put all the numbers together and you tell us how many are part of each tribe. We don't the numbers for each tribe we have, but we don't have the numbers for each family. And there's a lot, of, yeah, a lot of commentary going back and forth about this interplay of counting an individual, but also counting a community. To show that both are vital and both are important, the, the individual numbers are what make up the whole. So we need both. Both are, are vitally important. How do they count the people? So first of all, they actually have to come with papers and prove their lineage or have witnesses to say, yes, this person has been, ex- always been an accepted member in the, in the tribe of Benjamin. You know, or this person has always been in the tribe of Reuven or whatever it is. So you just arbitrarily decide. Also, the lineage for the tribes is established by the father. So you're going to say, father, you know, this is, that is that person's son, father, son, father, son. The other way is they weren't counted at right. And we're specifically not supposed to count people at right. You know, there are ways people count. If you ever so go like, not one, not two, not three, not four, sometimes they'll use a verse that they know how many words are in the verse. So if I go through the verse, I know how many how many people there are. People will not count directly, specifically. And so here, what they do, they give the half shekel, right? Which we spoke about, also we've spoken about it before. So everyone came to give the half shekel, and they counted it up. Okay, now we know how many we have. And this tally, this is actually the third census that's being taken. The verse was directly after the Exodus. Like, hey, these are my people, let's see how many there are. The second was after the sin of the golden calf because many of them, many died. And it's like, okay, let's let's see what we've got now. And now and now we have another one before they, uh, they start journeying out. And this, the numbers that were taken were specifically males from the ages of 20 and up. Basically the age that they go to the army, right? We gotta, we gotta see what, what is our uh, physical force? The, these, these are the people for the, for the census. Um, now, what they did is also that because you have so many people who are trying to count this stuff, the princes of each tribe helped, and it goes through the names of the princes of each tribe. One, if you remember this name, is the tribe of Judah, the tribe of Yehuda. The prince of that tribe was Nachshon ben Aminadab. Why you would remember that, you got to go back a book and a half. He's the one that jumped into the water, into the sea. Before the sea split, God said, journey forward. And the Jewish people are like, there's a sea here. How are we supposed to journey forward? And he just went straight in. He said, God said, journey forward. We're going to journey forward. And... He's always indicative of that sense of, uh, of of just go, you know. Now, so you have Moshe and Aaron, 
um, would go around and they would, they over, you know, they make, they took care of this to, to get this going on. And once they did the uh, count, all the numbers miraculously were all divisible. They're all whole numbers, all divisible by fifties. So here we go. They went through the tribe of Reuven had forty six thousand five hundred people. The tribe of Shimon, 59,300 people. The tribe of Gud, 45,650 45, people. So we got 46,500, 59,300, 45,650. Then the tribe of... this. These are actually... The names that are now, they're not in the order of the tribe. They're actually in the order of who was in each group for camping around when they, when they made camp. Which we'll get to that in a, sec, in a few minutes. Well, a minute. Then you have the tribe of Yehuda, the tribe of Judah, actually the largest tribe, 74,600. The tribe of Yisachar, 54,400. The tribe of Zvulun, 57,400. So that's another group. The tribe of Ephraim. The tribe of Yosef was two tribes. They were counted as two tribes. Why? Because the tribe of Levi is not being counted here. They're, God says, don't count the tribe of Levi. They're different. They're special. They're mine. There's going to be a different situation. Their census is going to be different. So the tribe of Ephraim, that was one of Yosef's sons, 40,000. 500, tribe of Manasseh, the other son, 32,200. You know, if you remember, Manasseh is the older son, right? But Ephraim was first in uh, prestige, I guess you could say. Binyamin, tribe of Benjamin, 35,400. So that's another group. The last group, tribe of Dun, 62,700. Tribe of Asher, 41,500. Tribe of Naphtali, 50, 53,400. All together, 600, 603,550 males from the age of 20 and up. Now, it says, Hashem specifically says, don't count the tribe of Levi, they're mine. They're kind of like my private legion. Um, there's different explanations, they say. Partly is because, first of all, the tribe of Levi did not participate in the tribe of Golden Calf, right? So we want to, we're separating them uh, to be the tribe of Levi, etc. The other thing is that God knew in a couple months from now, it's going to be about three months from now, the whole thing with the spies was going to happen. They say, oh, we can't conquer the land, etc. And the Jews will cry, oh, what are we supposed to do here? And God said, that's it. All, all the non-believers, but basically this entire generation, all of you, they're all going to die out in the desert. It's going to be your children who are going to go to the, into the land of Israel. And if you say, oh, all you guys, Hashem wanted to disclude, to not put lump the tribe of Levi in with that. They were never, they were always, you know, fierce believers. And we see that they didn't participate in the golden calf or anything like that. Um, they're also not part of the army, the tribe of Levi, because they are supposed to be dedicated to taking care of the Mishkan, the Beis Mikdash. Their job, they represent the Jewish people in the service of the Mishkan. And there's a lot, it repeats a lot, that if anybody tries to do the, the, the job of the tribe of Levi, if they trespass into their positions, if they try to get too close to this, that, whatever, there's capital punishment. And not just that, but the tribe of Levi, even within the tribe of Levi, someone who's a Levi, someone who's a Levite, can't trespass into the role of a Kohen, into the priest either. That's also capital punishment. Everybody's got to stay in their lane, basically. You got a job to do. Now, what they did is, so you have the, the way they would camp is that there would be each tribe kind of had their banner that they would camp under. And each one was a different color and a, a different uh, kind of insignia on it. And the color matched up with the color that was on the Hoshin Mishpah, that was on the breastplate of the, of the high priest. That's what color their flag was. Aside from that, you have four directions, north, south, east, west, right? That's, they would camp. So you have 12 tribes, four directions, there'd be three tribes, you know, in each of the directions. And then you'd move inward and you'd have the tribe of Levi was camped around the Mishkan. And at the center of everything was the Mishkan. So you go Mishkan, move out the tribe of Levi, move out all the other tribes. And it was very specific which family who was where. So the, the tribe that was first, first among all leading, le leading the way is the tribe of Yehuda. They were in the east. They, they feast eastward. So you have Yehuda, Yisachar Zvulun, that's one group. And they were all together 186,400 people. That's, well, for these men, right? If you put up the numbers here. The, the the Levites that they were next to, the Levi, when you went out of their, the general populace camp and you went into the tribe of Levi, right? You're moving inward now. The ones that they were next to, they were next to the families of Moshe and Aaron. Moshe and Aaron specifically were not with the other Levites. Levi, the original Levi, Reuben, Shimon, Levi, he had three sons, Gershon, Kasmurari. So that's three, that's that's three directions. And then Moshe and Aaron got, was in the fourth direction. They were in the east. The second group that you have, they were in the south. That's Reuben, Shimon, and Gud. 
and all together that's 150,450. They actually say um, the the Levite tribe that they were next, the Levite family that they were next to was the, was the family of Kahas. And we'll get to that who came from Kahas was Korah. Korah who, who led a big rebellion against Moshe. And Rashi says, you know, woe is to, woe is to an evil person and woe is to his neighbor. That people are influenced by their neighbors. And because of that, when this rebellion occurred, you had a lot of people from the tribe of Uvain who were part of it, 250. And the opposite of that is, you know, how fortunate, good it is, good it is for a tzaddik and good for his neighbor. You have the tribe of Yehudi, Yisrael and Zvul, and they, they camp next to Moshe and Aaron, and they're all greatly influenced to become great Torah scholars. Now, we have the the next direction we have is West, who was on the westward side, you could say, Ephraim, the, the one who, the main tribe of that, Ephraim, Menashe, Binyamin. Altogether, it's 108,100 people. They were next to the family of Gershon. And then the fourth direction, that's the north, the north side, the north direction of the camp. You got Dan, who's in charge, and you have Asher and Naftali. And that's 157,000 people, 150. 7,600 people, and they were next to the tribe of Merari. They actually have how Gershon, Kahas, Merari, the three children of Levi, how they also, you have Yochevet, Moshe's mother, Moshe and Aaron's mother, right? You have Moshe, you have Moshe, Aaron, and Miriam. And Yochevet is the daughter of Levi. And she, they say that Aaron is like Gershon and Moshe is like Kahas. Aaron's like Murray kind of thing. It just, it's just drawing this parallel between her three children and like the, the tribe of Levi as a general thing. Now, after that, after we did all these counting and we have everybody's positions now, the Torah portion says, Aaron. It says, Vela told us Aaron and Moshe. These are the children, the generations of Aaron and Moshe, etc., etc., etc. Vela Shemos B'nei Aaron. It goes to the sons of Aaron. So it tells us, oh, we're going to find out now who Moshe and Aaron's children are. And then it only tells us who Aaron's kids are. And part of that is it's saying that because Moshe was so, um, you say, active or diligent about teaching them Torah, he was considered like a father to them. And why specifically are we mentioning Aaron's kids now? Because Well, because we're talking about the roles of the priests, right? That's Aaron and his sons, his family. And he had four children, Nadav, Avi, Elazar, Tamar. Nadav and Avi were the two who died in when they did the uh, the celebration of, of the Mishkan, right? And... They did. They died. They didn't have any children. They were married. They had no children. So, all the priests now is going to be from Elazar and Itamar. Elazar also. He was in. He was kind of put in, in charge of all the other Levites, as like dividing up jobs and overseeing everything that was supposed to happen. He had that charge. Um, then it says, okay, now you can count up the the Levies. Now you count up the tribe of Levi, and bring the Levim before Aaron, in, before the tent of meeting, before the sanctuary, basically, and explain to them your job is the Mishkan, you have to take care of the tabernacle, each family is going to have their job, right? This is what you're in charge of, what you're in charge of, what you're in charge of, um, etc. Also, the tribe of Levi is now going to be instead of the firstborns. I say the firstborn in Egypt, they were going to be mine. Then you had the sin of the golden calf, they lost their privileges, they're not going to be in charge of the Mishkan anymore. Levi is going to be in charge of it. So you're going to be head for head, you got to swap them out for each other. A, a firstborn swapping out the Levi, the Levi's like, you know, I'm standing in his stead, I'm in his stead. Now, the Levi, they counted them, their tribe was counted from one month and up. That's that's what their census was done. And just a side note, say, how do we know that the Be'ets, how want a one month and up, how can they count in these total tallies? Well, we have that from Yochebed. Yochebed is the mother of Moshe and Aaron and Miriam. When we talk about how when the Jewish people first came down to Egypt, the old Jacobson clan, they said there were 70 people. They said, well, if you count that how many people, where's the 70th? Well, because Yochebed was born as they were entering the land, she's the 70th. So we see that even a baby there, even then, the daughter of Levi rounded out the numbers. We see that as well, too. Now, Moshe said, how can I go and start counting up babies? Like, you know, we can't, oh, come bring your lineage, right? It doesn't happen. So Hashem said, don't worry, you go, you stand outside the tent of each lady family, and then I'll tell you how many people are there. You go stand outside the tent and you get the numbers. So the family of Gershon, they had 7,500 people. And their jobs were like the curtains. All the, you know, there were so many tapestries and everything like that, that you wrapped around the walls and you put here, there, and the screens and this, that were the, the doors and stuff. That was their job, rolling up the curtain, taking care of the curtains. You're gonna put them up, you're gonna take them down, you're gonna transport them. Those they were able to transport on wagons. Then you have the family of Kahas, 8,600 people. 
their job were all the the vessels and the and the furnishings and stuff like that. So the ark and the menorah and the mizbeach, all these things they had to carry. They couldn't touch them by themselves. They had to have Aaron and his sons would go and cover them up, put the poles on them, and then they were allowed to go and carry them. And they couldn't stick them on wagons. They had to carry those on their shoulders. And then we have Merari, the family of Merari, 6,200 people. And they their job was the walls and the pillars and the sockets, all those like the structural parts. And those also taking them down, putting them up, and not there with transporting wagons. Um, now it actually says that we want to see um, how many how many Levine. Well, so the total now for the tribe of Levi, we got twenty-two thousand three hundred. And it actually says there were three hundred firstborn Levies, Levites, and they're going to substitute for themselves. So now we've got twenty-two hundred Levies who are going to be instead of the uh, the firstborns. So tally up how many firstborns we've got because we've got to make sure that we've got a head for head count. But when they tally it all up, the firstborns are going to tally them up for one month and up. That's 22,273. So we got 273 extra people. So Hashem said those 273 extra ones are going to have to be redeemed for five shekel. And all that's going to go, it was 1,365 uh, uh, shekel that was given to Aaron and his sons, etc. And uh, there's a calculation for how that was. Now, there was going to be another census of the tribe of Levi between the ages of 30 to 50. You have to do a, a second count of that. And where does that count come from? Because that's those are the ones who, are, they got to be fit and strong enough to be carrying everything. Right? So you have your one number to see how many is in the tribe altogether, and the other number to see how um, who, who do we've got to work. And it's also the ages of 30 and 50, it's because, well, they've got to be physically fit for what they're doing. Definitely those who are carrying, you know, the Ark and the Mzbeach and all that stuff, you got to be strong, you got to carry it. But you have the, some of the other tribes, for example, the ones in charge of the curtains and stuff like that, they were shimming up and down poles to hang these curtains up, take them down, all that kind of stuff. This is not a job for, for a young kid to do. These are stuff you need strong men to do this kind of job. And there's also the very strict rules about don't touch anything, don't anything like that. And then it goes through kind of how they packed everything up. The Ark, for example, was first covered with the parochas. That was kind of like the dividing curtain between the sanctuary and the Holy of Holies. And then they would put this, it was called... Um, a cloth over it that was made out of tachash. I think that's like the multi-hued kind of cloth. And then you put tchela, which is blue, a blue cloth. So it was wrapped up, wrapped up, wrapped up, put on the poles. Now we could carry it. The shulchan, which was the table with the showbreads. You had tchela, which is the blue. Then you have a scarlet a cloth on it. Then the tachash again. And then everything else, the menorah and the incense altar, the altar for the incense, the golden altar. That's also, you put on the tchela, the blue, and then the tachash skin, um, coloring. And then the outer mizbeach, where all the sacrifice was on, that had purple first, and then a tachash. And then it says a Lazar, who's Aaron's son, he's going to carry the oil that's for the menorah, the anointing oil, he's going to carry the incense, and he's going to make sure everybody's doing what they're going to do, and he's going to supervise all the carrying of the furnishings. And that's actually, that's Parshas Bamidbar. 